Hey everybody, it's Sean Sewell, the Ingrimit.com podcast. Very excited to have on the show today, my good friend, Matthew Flaherty. Matthew is a stud of a lot of different disciplines, uh, from strong first to flexible steel. He runs Stafford Strength out in New York City. And uh, Matthew and I are uh, really fortunate to be sharing a page in Pavel's newest book, The Quick and the Dead, for the strong endurance. So, uh, and also in the audio book too. In fact, in the way over uh, back home today, I was listening to the audio book and you hear Pavel talking and Matthew Flaherty did a steamboat, a hundred mile bike ride, you know, and then Sean Sewell, Colorado mountain man. It's, it's super cool to share that with you. So thank you for your time and thank you for being here. Yeah, man. Awesome. Glad we were uh, finally able to, uh, to get this, uh, get this set up and, uh, and beyond. Absolutely. So, um, well, this, you know, as we're recording this, we're both in the middle of dealing with this coronavirus. And you're in New York City, so what's that like right now? Quarantined. It is a ghost town. Um, yeah. They are considering doing. I forget exactly what they called it, but within the next forty-eight hours, uh, you can only leave your home for basically medical uh, needs wow. uh, and emergency. You know, emergency going going to the store. Ten people in the store at a time. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. It's kind of scary, you know. City that's you know the city that never sleeps is uh, about to take a nap for a little bit, and yeah. uh, we just don't know. You know, we don't know how long. You know, we listen to the president, and he says, "Hey, this could go July, August." It's unfortunately just nobody has the answers, so mm-hmm. we, we we just don't know. Oh. know? So we, uh, me and my wife were lucky enough. About a week ago, we uh, took off out to Long Island to head to my in laws. So at least my kids have a backyard that they can run around in, you know, oh, that's smart. Of a, instead of a stairwell in the city. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, we just, we, we, we don't know what's going on and it doesn't seem like anybody really does either. Yeah. It seems to be evolving so, so quickly and, and randomly and it's just hard to keep up with. I was, you know, listening to Tim Ferriss's podcast and he had some really good information on there. He had um, uh, Jack, um, on there recently talking about like the emotional and the spiritual and everything about accepting this. And like, um, there's a lot of, a lot of levels to this besides just health economics, you know, it's, it's interesting times. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm going stir crazy and, you know, my in-laws have a pretty nice, uh, you know, pretty nice setup here for us. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. imagine being in my thousand square foot apartment with the two dogs, the two kids and my wife, who I love dearly. Oh, for sure. But it's, you know, the only thing that we can go out for is to walk the dog. I mean, I think I can take my dogs out for a walk do that or put them in the shower, close the door. And when they're done, they're done. <laughs> Hope um, for the best. But yeah, it's just, it's, there's basically no human interaction for th- this is my human interaction. Oh, you know what? <sighs> I feel you, man. It's, I'm stir crazy too. My wife is working from home, thank goodness, which is great. And I work from home already um, for the engagement part. And uh, it's only a few days in for us as well. And I'm like, pull my hair out, what little bit of hair I've left. I'm like, God, I just want to go interact and go serve. And yeah, <laughs> you got a lot to pull out. It's uh, there. It's a beautiful man. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> the last till August, you'll be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's hilarious. But, um, no, it's, you know, as a fitness professional too, both you and I, um, you know, share some similar backgrounds. You've done all of the strong first stuff, right? SFG one and two. I've, I've, I've done all I've passed three out of four. Hey, that's three more than me. <laughs> so yeah, I've done currently, I have the, uh, the SFG one and two, mm-hmm. uh, I have the SFB. Um, actually earlier today I was, uh, I'm supposed to go to uh, Chicago for the dome. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the SFL again. And we just got word that it was moved to the beginning of August, July 31st, August 1st and 2nd. But I'm going to be out there in Colorado. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to find another time to do it. Um, but yeah, that's the last one uh, within the Strong First curriculum that, uh, that I need to go through and pass. That's very impressive. Very impressive. And as a person who's gone through each one of those uh, SFB with Karen Smith and, and, uh, Alan, great, great people. Uh, SFG with, uh, Fabio Zonin most recently, Brett Jones before that. And, uh, Zar Horton before that. And then the SFB recently with, uh, with Doc Hartle. It's, uh, tough stuff to pass. 
it's uh, very yeah you know it's it's, it's which is good the way i look at it is <laughs> spoiler alert i did not pass a single one of the certifications that i went to at the certification it's very common yeah because and look, i don't recommend this <laughs> But it's not that I didn't prepare for it. It's that the cues that I got there changed everything I did. Yeah. So, for example, when I went through my first, my first, uh, at the time it was the RKC, um, oh God, 11, 11 years ago, I basically walked in and Brett Jones was my team leader. And, and his first thing, you know, he saw me doing work and he goes, you went through such and such certification before this, haven't you? And I was like, yeah. He goes, cool. Forget everything you learned. And it was just like, great. And on top of that, I had broken my nose three weeks before in a uh, Taekwondo tournament. So as badass as it was during like rep 30 ish of my snatch test, my nose just exploded Wow. And I was like, I'm going to keep going. And they're like, I already stopped the timer. I'm not watching this. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I took all the cues that I've learned at each of them and, you know, applied that over the next, you know, however long at the time they had given me to finally submit the video mm -hmm. uh, and, and completely changed everything, everything that I was already doing for the better. Right. So so for the re most recent one with the SFL, when I, uh, when I went through it, um, I was submitting the video at the end. I didn't pass the, the, the deadlift and the military press. Military press has always been my, my weakest uh, – barbell military press has always yeah. been my weakest, uh, my weakest uh, uh, lift. I decided to go and get a hernia. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, funny thing, I'm assuming we'll go into this later, but with my hernia is when I actually did that ride that I'm in the book for. No way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're tough. Yeah. You're so really tough. Basically had, uh, you know, had the appointment with my surgeon, um, and they said, Hey, as long as there's no pain, you can really continue what you're doing. Once there's pain, then we need to operate. Mm -hmm. like, All right, fine. Um, I have a judo tournament next weekend. She was like, all right. Good luck. Came in third. I was like, um, I've got a 110 mile bike tour coming up in Colorado. She's like, you're crazy. Have fun. And then I was at an FMS workshop after that. I was demoing the plank. Wow. Get into that plank position. I go into like everything that Doc Hartle says. It's like, boom, Hartle plank. Yep. Oh crap. What was that? And just felt this sharp shooting pain coming up from the hernia made an appointment with my surgeon and she just kind of looks out her office window. I never even saw her. She just looks out her office window and goes Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. When do you want to come in? I like her style. I was like, uh, I guess Thursday. So I can go back to work Monday. She goes, no, but I'll see you Thursday anyway. Wow. Oh, Matthew, you're tough. That's, <laughs> that's, you're crazy too. I appreciate that. That's yeah. I've heard that once or 17 times. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, um, I, as a kid, I had a double hernia and back in the day, the surgery for that was like, you know, iliac crest, iliac crest. I've got this big happy face on my gut. I'm, I'm hoping the surgeries have evolved since then. A little bit. A little bit. I've Still. got three marks that you can barely see, you know, oh, yeah. in the belly button, just below the belly button and slightly uh, left of that. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> I woke up from the surgery and my surgeon basically said to me, she goes, all right, Matt, you did great. Um, I need you to get up and start walking immediately. Mm -hmm. um, also, before you leave the hospital, you have to go to the bathroom. You have to pee before you leave or we can't discharge you. Oh, and we did both sides. And I'm like still, and I'm like, oh, what do you mean you did both sides? And she's like, yeah, you know, in the pre-op, I felt a little bit of a weakness on that side, like it was about to go. So we just did it anyway and figured, you know, we'd save you coming back again. I'm like, okay. Third. Hours later, I finally went to the bathroom. Oh wow! And I think they—I kid you not—I think they actually scared the piss out of me because the nurses came in and were like, "I, right, we're going on the point. If you don't go within half an hour, we're putting in a catheter." I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll be right back. Is—is is this enough?" <laughs> and Motivation. They let me go. Oh wow! wow Walked wow, home wow. from the hospital. Uh, 
it was 10 blocks. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I mean, they had got how I don't, I don't even know how many laps I did around the floor. Sure. Um, you know, the, waiting to pee, walked home and then just dealt with it after that. Wow. And what was recovery time for you? It happened in September. No, I had the surgery. Yeah. The end of September, beginning of October. <clears throat> Halloween, I was walking around the city fine. Uh, excuse me, me and my younger son were uh, the hangover. So he, I had the little baby carrier. He was on my stomach, and I was Zach Galifianakis with the hair out, and uh, that's what we were. So I was good then. I didn't really do anything until that January, and then um, my my recovery for the program was Dr. Mark Chang's Tai Chang program. Okay. I had had it for years. I had had the DVD. It was just never. Ah, training for this, can't do that. Training for that, can't do this. Finally, I was like, you know what? I got 12 weeks, I can do this. And did the program, and then that uh, went skiing in February, was back out in Steamboat in February. End of March, I had finished their program and uh, started lifting again in the March, beginning of April. Wow, very impressive. Well, my recovery was uh, was much slower. I was... Uh, kindergarten and I was laid up and I was I had a Betamax and that's how long ago it was watching like Star Wars and you know the original Star Wars so um yeah hernias man no joke yeah yeah I, it's funny I don't even know how I got it I had done the um I had gone through Paul McElroy's uh the amazing 12 program and I had put myself through it so at the end for the photo shoot, I, you know, got to do everything for the photo shoot. And I was like, wow, that's a really weird muscle. Like I, <laughs> it must be from all the Taekwondo that I've done. I've developed this really weird muscle on my left leg. And then I had a regular doctor's appointment and that's when the doctor was like, no, you idiot. That's a hernia, not a muscle. Yeah. Uh, and then everything happened. <laughs> wow. I mean, in the stories, you covered a lot of territory just to, to give the background to the listeners of like how much of a badass you are. Um, not too many people do 100 mile bike rides and the level of stuff that you do. So, um, well, you mentioned a lot of people in that. Um, who are some of your mentors and heroes that helped you or inspired you to get into fitness in the first place? Oh, man, it's, it, it's funny. My first degree was in TV video production. Really? That's what, yeah, that's what I went to school for. Um, high school, uh, walking around to class and my English teacher at the time, Mr. Esposito pulled me in and said, Hey, we need somebody to work the camera for our HCTV, basically our 15 minute, you know, midday news feed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll do that. And from there, it was kind of like my love for TV video production started, went to, uh, went to school for that you know, finished my four year degree in nice five years and started working basically with a video company that was filming high school sports. So whether it was for, you know, the family, you know, to make highlight reels for the kid going to college, uh, the high school next week's opponent, you know, that's, that's what I was doing. Wow. Did that for probably three, three, four years. Um, started to slow down a little bit and then my, uh, well now father-in-law, uh, basically was like, dude, you, you live in a gym. Why don't you go get paid to do that? I was like, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Got my, uh, got my first, um, you know, training certificate, got my first, uh, uh, uh certification in that. And then, uh, wow, we're going on. 10, 13, 14, maybe 15 years now. Wow. That's, that's impressive. 25. I'll be 40 this year. Yeah. 15 years. December will be 15 years that I've been uh, training. Hey, cheers to that, man. That's yeah. impressive. Oh, yeah. been there for a while. <laughs> exactly. Happy St. Patty's day. Oh yeah. It is St. Patrick's day. Here I am drinking. Side note, first New York city parade that I've missed since 1995. Wow. There's a lot of firsts right now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, now I'm depressed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, um, um, oh, so the original question before we sidetrack everywhere else. So from there, started training. Um, like I said, my father-in-law said, you're living in a gym anyway. And that was because I was, I was competing full-time with, uh, with martial arts, with Taekwondo. So I had probably a tournament every month. So it was like, literally, I was training or doing the TV video to pay for my gym memberships. Um, yeah. So did, uh, did that. Um, went through an in-house certification with the organization that I was working with at the time, the gym that I was working with at the time. Uh, for kettlebells. And then a buddy of mine that worked with me said, Hey, you really want to get in this kettlebells. You need to look at this again at the time, this dragon door and the RKC stuff, you know, don't forget this, this little stuff. That's what you need to do. So I was like, okay, cool. Where and when and how much signed up for it. And who was my first instructor, but none other than Brett Jones. Awesome. Um, so yeah, man. So to be able to learn uh, to learn from him was was, was pretty surreal, pretty uh, pretty unbelievable. You know, at the time, it's like, okay, who's who's this Brett Jones guy? You know, I, I've never heard of him. I, I don't I I don't know. Right. Uh, but now it's like I look back at it and I was like, that's right, dude. Team Jones. That's 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 the team that I was on. Yeah, that's magnificent. Um, so learned, learned a tremendous amount from him, you know, and then over the years have been asked to assist at a number of SM, at, at, a number of FMS events. So I've worked with him a lot as well, you know, got to kind of pick his brain on, uh, on you know, some lunch hours and during the event. So oh, he's wow. definitely been somebody that I've learned a tremendous amount from. Mm-hmm. Uh, following that then went to my, went to the RKC, went to the level two. And uh, Doc Chang was my team leader there. And it, it's kind of cool because uh, I was in Korea a couple of years ago with, uh, with John Ingham and Doc Chang. And, you know, we're, you know, we're out of one night at dinner. And it's like I'm sitting there at the end. I, I looked at Doc. I was like, this is pretty cool because I've gone now from being one of your students to one of your assistants to, dude, I'm sitting here having dinner with Doc Chang. Yeah. And that was, that was cool. So, you know, him again as well with, you know, everything that he's done, learned a tremendous amount um, from him. Oh God, who else? Uh, John Ingham, again, with flexible steel and, uh, you know, strong first as well. I've, I've probably assisted him more than anybody else within the, uh, within the organization. Wow. Learned a tremendous amount from him, you know, within strong first, you know, their, all of their, their courses, as a martial artist, um, with inflexible steel as well. So honestly, I think those, those three have pretty much been the, 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 the biggest influences on what's created this. <laughs> Man, that, that is so cool on so many levels. I mean, anybody in the fitness industry knows who those people are. And I, especially, I've, I've, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so too. Right. I, otherwise yeah. I probably wouldn't trust them. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, Brett Jones. Brett Jones, uh, I had the chance of learning from him. Um, he was the the, te- the you know the master instructor, and um, the way he coaches and teaches, it's subtle and effective. I liked it. Uh, yeah, just a great person. Great person. Yeah, you know, there's no there's no sugarcoating it with them. It's like, dude, yeah. you're doing something wrong. They're not, you know, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Tell me what I need to do to you know to get better. I don't don't care about, Oh, this looks good, but dude, yeah. just tell me like, no, that looks like shit. This is what you need to do. Yeah. Stop and being a that's honestly what, what they've done. Yeah. You know, I learned something this last year that really blew my mind. Uh, niceness and kindness are not the same thing. So previously, um, I think a lot of people, myself probably included would be very nice and very, uh, kid glove almost. Whereas a kind person will be direct, and give you what's best for you. Mm-hmm. And they're good at that. They're kind. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, they, Hey, this is what you need to do. You know, don't, you know, I'm not going to go cry cause I failed both certifications at the time. Like mm-hmm. tell me what I need to do to put this into place and get what, you know, the end goal is. Yeah. And that's what, that's what they've all done. Exactly. And you know, to, to your credit here, I failed every one of them. I've done them multiple times and and I, I enjoy failing it because I don't want to go in and just get something. I want to know how I can get better so I can coach better. And it comes in handy every day when I'm coaching. 
And again, the people I seem to attract and work with, thank goodness, aren't there for um, emotional cuddling. You know, they want to get better themselves. Yeah. People, they've either learned the hard way or they knew beforehand that, you know, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be straightforward and I'm going to tell you what you need to do, whether you want to hear it or not, whether you like it or not. Yeah. This is your end goal. If you're doing this, you're not going to get to this end goal. Mm-hmm. Like there are some people that I've, uh, ah, whatever, I can tell the story. I've told some people straight up, all right, if you keep going on the path, this, this is the best you're going to get. Forget what you want to do. Th- this is all you're going to get. If you want to get here, these are some of the changes that we need to make. Some of them have made those changes. Some of them, some of them haven't. Mm-hmm. The ones that have made those changes are still working with me. And that's you that haven't, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, like you said, I need that person that's going to, you know, just tell me everything's okay. Look, I'll tell you everything's okay when everything's okay. But when it's not okay, I'm going to let you know that it's not okay. Yeah. Here's what you need to do. Oh, I'm glad to hear that from their professional. And that's why you've been in business for so long. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's true. And when I first started training, it was, uh, not quite as long ago as you, I think it was, it's 11 years now. And at first you're taking any kind of client, right? Or any kind of student. And sometimes very oftentimes they're not the best fit for you and vice versa. And it's uh, like an emotional or time vampire. And it would just mm-hmm. it would take a lot out of me and I come home almost worthless. So now I've learned to interview the process of the potential student and let them interview me and get to know if it's a good fit. And if it's a good fit, it's great fit. I say, I say that to everybody that comes in for the first time, you know, it's like, Hey, I, all right, great. I you know, they reach out to me via the website for, you know, wherever they find me. Hey, I want to come start training. How much are you? Cool. What I want you to do first is come in. Mm-hmm. I want you to see the facility because for some people, this may not be the facility for you either. That's a good point. I want you to talk to me because I want to make sure that, I'm the person that you want to spend all this money on and that you want to be training with. Mm-hmm. And then the third part of that, I want to make sure I want to train you. It's a very important part. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I say to people, it's like, look, you know, it's like, Oh, who do you work with? Look, I can work with pretty much anybody that comes in to see me, but where has my education gone? Mm-hmm. Who do I enjoy training? Who is going to work the best with me? in the facility that I'm in. You know, I'm trying to think like right now, like while I'm out on Long Island, I have a couple of clients out here, uh, a couple of students out here. Um, They all have different goals, but they know the kind of coach that I am, the kind of trainer that I am. I know what they're willing to do so I can work with them. Yes, I can work with you on you want to lose a hundred pounds. Great. I can work with you on that. You want to be better at tennis. Awesome. I can work with you on that. You just want to be the best you can be. Awesome. I can work with you on that. Yeah. There are three completely different people. There are com- three completely different skill sets as well, mm-hmm. but we mesh, we work together. You trust me in the process. I trust you in the process. We can make this a process and continue with this with this relationship and go forward with it. So oh, that's beautiful. So, yeah. I can work with anybody, but who do I enjoy working with? Who also, who enjoys working with me? Right. Very important. And I'm glad to hear you say that too, because I, I see a lot of uh, fitness professionals, especially when they are going into it, like, oh, I'm going to work with this population only. And the reality is it's not that right. It, it is. And it isn't like, look, if you look at all of like my education, my master's degree and the majority of certifications that I have, they are geared towards working with athletes Mm -hmm. population. I enjoy working with. It's the population I like working with. That's again, that's where my education has gone. But if you're willing to put in the work, okay, fine. You may not be an Olympic athlete, a national athlete, you know, whatever you may just want, Hey, I just want a better quality of life. I look, Here's the style that I train. Here's how I train. If you're cool with that, I can work with you. Right. And that's how, you know, that's how my business has been. 
Oh, I dig that. No, I, I think when I was going through, a, I went to a trade school for fitness in the first place um, 11 years ago. And I watched, we went from like 40 students down to maybe eight that actually graduated. It was great because you got to weed out the people who weren't really in it, you know, mm-hmm. just like in Strong First, right? And so um, the people I was referring to would come in there, I'm going to train bodybuilding, fitness professionals, you know, or, or fit, fitness athletes, whatever. And because um, that's what they did. And I was like, Mm, but you could do so much more for society if you just use these tools to help people, right? So like, like you said, I really enjoy working with, uh, I work with a lot of people going to mountains, right? Mm-hmm. People do skiing and snowboarding and biking and hiking and bow hunting and all these really great stuff. And also I really enjoy working with people from the bariatric population because that's near and dear to my heart. My whole family was morbidly obese. And so I really like empowering them often with the, the kettlebell, you know, and getting them to enjoy their quality of life as well, like you said. So it's great to be able to use that professionally and diversely. Yeah. And, and that's what it comes down to. You know, you said empowering people. Mm-hmm. What do you, you know, those three different people, those three different populations that I'm working with guy that wants to lose hundred pounds. What is, what, what am I doing? I'm empowering him to be a better version of him mm-hmm. so that he can be there for his parents, his yeah. significant other, you know, so he can be there. He can be here longer. Yes. Person that's playing tennis. What am I doing with them? I'm empowering them in that in- instance to be the best tennis player that they can be. The person that's just looking, hey, I want to be here longer for my kids. You know, a lot of people used to come to me. It's like, you know, well, all right, what's your goal? Look, I just had a grandkid. All right, cool. So <laughs> what am I, I'm empowering you to be again here as long as possible so mm-hmm. that you can be the best grandfather, grandmother, grandparent to your grandkids. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's I, what I look at it in this industry. That's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to empower you to be the best fighter. I'm going to empower you to be the best X, Y, Z, Q, R, L, M, N, O, P. That's what it comes down to. Absolutely. The best version of you. I love it. Ah, that's, you get your heart in the right place, man. Well, um, so we, we did mention briefly snowboarding. I think you like to snowboard. A little bit. I don't get as many days as I would like to because, you know, East Coast sucks for skiing and snowboarding. I, <laughs> um, yeah, we're spoiled here in Colorado for sure. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that once or twice for the last 20, what am I, 40, 35 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I, go out, if I go out west first, if I get out to Colorado first, there's no chance that I'm going to get a weekend trip on the East Coast. So I try to maybe get one or two weekends on the East Coast, and then I can go out, you know, go out West, which unfortunately this year was just, uh, I mean, well, everything shut down, but it was yeah. just, my, uh, just my steamboat trip. I'm so bummed I missed you on that. We were going to link up, and I had the, the time scheduled. I even had a place I was going to take you. It's called Blueboard, Bluebird uh, Backcountry, and they provide, oh. yeah, uh, and I know the owner, Eric, and uh, we were doing an interview last week with him, and... I, I was actually, I don't want to freak anybody out, but I was super sick. I had 104 fever and I got bronchitis and I was like, I can't be right to anybody. And um, I was bummed to miss you. Um, we had a, you know, while the kids are still young, we can, um, you know, go the week before president's week mm-hmm. because uh, <laughs> once we start going the week before or the week of president's week, I'm going to have to start working a lot more. Yeah. Um, it basically saved us about 11 grand going the week before president's week. Wow. And well, that's a lot of money. For, for, for four of us. <laughs> yeah. Bugsley, shut up. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, both of my dogs. Are, what? Your dogs are cute too. <laughs> um, they're literally just laying on my wife's bed sleeping. Yeah. And I guess my male had a nightmare and that's who you guys just heard. Oh, how um, cute. Yeah, we have our two uh, dogs here too. They're sleeping somewhere, but I'm sure they'll pop up any moment and cause chaos. Uh, thanks, Bugsy. You ruined my train of thought. Um, uh, snowboarding, steamboat, uh, eleven thousand dollars. Steamboat, a ton of money. Oh yeah, for the four of us. So from you know me and my wife, my two kids, mm-hmm. the airline tickets basically jumped six hundred dollars each. Hmm. Uh, the room t- jumped the rest of the money, and then you know the the, the lift tickets, you know, because it's blackout time. Uh, also jump. So all I can, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling them that week before uh, president's week. And that's when we're heading up. I would, I would do this for long as possible for the fourth reason, which is less people on the mountain. 
oh god tell me about it tell me about it. i mean i'm sure you you saw and everybody listening to this saw that uh that that lift line at vale yeah imagine that so you have that weekend valentine's day weekend and a powder day well we were out for valentine's day so that was i mean that was fine but uh yeah. that's that's right so valentine's day was that thursday we left that that saturday so we were there at the beginning oh, yeah. of that um that was that line went on for a long ways i'll try uh, to find yeah, a picture i mean i think it was like the ceo the cfo the coo and like the head of maintenance all made uh comments about that line <laughs> apologizing to people because it was whew, that was ridiculous yeah luckily and not to rub it in anybody's face, but I do backcountry splitboarding, so uh-huh. I have to deal with resorts. And and also during the show, um, as of I think was it last day or two, all the resorts are are closed, which they should be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, which is smart. Yeah, and, one um, of my uh, one of uh, my 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 older son, one of his, uh, he's basically he's on spring break for the next two weeks, mm-hmm. which has turned into his school is now closed until April twentieth. <laughs> um, A long break. Yeah. One of uh, one of the kids in his class, their family went out to. I guess they weren't watching the news. They went out to to Denver. They went out to Colorado. Literally got off the plane in Denver. Realized that the all the mountains were closed and sat in Denver for a couple hours until they can change their flight and then literally flew home. Wow! Well, so within forty eight hours, actually, I think probably less than that. Within twenty four hours, flew to Denver and flew home. That's a bummer. Oh, yeah. well, you know, they're missing out. We have great national parks and state parks that are still open. Today, they're still open. <laughs> so Yeah, but I don't know for a uh, for five, six-year-old, four, five, six-year-old, I don't know if they were uh, going to do some hiking with you. Yeah, that's probably true. I, mean, I would have found a babysitter and be like, all right, kids, we'll see you for dinner. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking people out um, tomorrow and, and Thursday and Friday to do backcountry skiing and splitboarding um, with a safe distance, of course. We're doing everything correctly. Um, which is, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's unique, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not, you can say it, dude. It's weird. It's, it's really weird. Like, you know, I, I'm a hugger. Weird. I like to go up to people and hug them, you know? And I'm like, I can't. I do jujitsu and judo. Touche. How the hell can I do that from six feet apart? That's aggressive hugging. Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, actually I kind of left. Uh, I guess, uh, you had posted something before. Um, just about going out and mm-hmm. uh, some people, well, how are you going out? Aren't all the mountains closed? And you just commented like, not where I'm going. There are no lifts where I go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, I'm glad you saw that. And it's true. You know, I want people to know, I want to empower them that you can still go outside. You don't have to get on the chairlift. You can go put on a pair of snowshoes. You can go to uh, tons of state parks around here and open spaces and walk your dogs and take the kids out. I know, I was walking my dogs this afternoon and I saw a neighbor and he's a principal for grade school and he's got like five kids, you know, and he's playing basketball and you know, the weather is still nice out of here. There's, there's, I think this is going to be a nice opportunity for us all to learn what's important, how to adapt, be a little more appreciative and, you know, and build character. Like I said, it's, you know, I, I, I can't even say that the weather's been nice here because it was like 30 yesterday. It's 60 today. I think it's going to be another 20 tomorrow. It's like, that's really wonky. I can't tell if this is, you know, COVID-19 or, uh, or the flu or, or, uh, or allergies <laughs> rather. I'm not sick. I'm I got the flu. I sneeze often. Yeah. Um, I have allergies too. It's just so it's, it's freaking weird. It is. And you know, probably for you too. Um, our restaurants are closed for two months. And that sucks for a lot of reasons. You know, a lot of my good friends, especially in the fitness industry, a lot of our spouses work in service industries as well, retail or bars or, or restaurants. And um, oh, I feel for them so bad. I, at least I have like five jobs, you know, so I can like leverage different things. Uh, none of it's making up for the lost income, I, you know, that we're experiencing right now, but we'll find a way to get through. Long story longer. Uh, it is, a, it is a very challenging, it's very, very spooky, very weird um, time for sure. And then, yeah. like you said, new information coming in, new press conference. Oh, this is now off limits. You can't do this. You got to do that. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have the restaurants. Restaurants are closed too. Um, restaurants, bars, nightclubs, gyms. Uh, Broadway is completely shut down as well. Mm-hmm. Um restaurants can just do takeout and 
delivery? Uh, and delivery. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they basically have like, you know, the police caution tape up all around seating areas. Wow. Um, last I heard, unless they changed it again, I mean, it went from, you know, groups of 50 to groups of 25. I think the la- again, the last I heard it was groups of 10. That's why we have 10. Yep. And that's, I mean, that's what we basically are dealing with for the next, <laughs> I wish I knew. Right. Right. You know, like right now it's nice and quiet in here. My wife is visiting her sister and she has four daughters and a husband and her mother's up there. I'm like, if I come, that's pushing past 10. Mm-hmm. Also, I wanted to see you. So <laughs> that's <a> nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's unique, you know, and she had a birthday party. It was going to be this weekend. I'm like, the hell you do. Like we will postpone that. <laughs> and yeah. so right at a later time. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Adaptations. Yeah. Hey, you look, you, you make, you make the best of it. I mean, I've for sure. a whole bunch of stuff that I've been <laughs> procrastinating and putting off for forever. And it's like, all right, well, while I'm kind of cooped up for God knows how long, here's what I'm going through. Right. You know, this is a great opportunity for a lot of people to do stuff like that. Online courses, like I enrolled in three today. Um, and then, you know, a chance for me to read, read more. Uh, I play guitar, uh, I can practice more Metallica. A lot of cool things. I can do more podcasts now. Like, this is great interaction, right? This is yeah. fun. And hopefully, people will find it. I mean, my computer's six feet apart, too, if, like, if that counts. I, you could. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that I think we're going to adapt to. Um, yeah. Well, is there anything like you're looking forward to learning about or taking courses on? Um, I've actually, I've signed up over the, over the last, uh, couple months, I've signed up for a couple of different courses with, um, athletes acceleration. Cool. Uh, so going through, finally, finally going through those courses. Um, I've had the textbook again for the last probably year and a half. So now I'm actually going to start reading it and go through, um, the work for the uh, NSCA, their, their TSAC, their tactical strength and conditioning coach. Interesting. I have an NSCA and I was very curious about that one. Yeah. I was, you know, it, it's actually funny, you know, I posted in one of the groups. I was like, I oh, look, I've got my CPT. I've got my CSCS. How long should I put into reading this textbook? Mm-hmm. And it was weird. It was like the majority of the answers were go take the test next weekend. It's like, wait, what, what do you mean go take the test next weekend? It's like, all right, any of the workout questions, it's, the answer is carries. It's like, wait, no, 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 hold on. Hold on. <laughs> like farmer's I carries? I haven't right? worked with this population yet. I have the textbook. Let's just go through it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, you're good. Go take it next weekend. <laughs> I was like, cool. I'm going to take six months. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I want to be prepared. You know, look, I got the textbook. I want to read it. I want to go through it. Yeah. So far I'm like through the first four or five chapters. It's a lot of it is review, but yeah. it's also good. Cause it's stuff that I haven't gone through in 10, 15 years. Some of it, because it's a lot of it is, it's not how I talk to the athletes and the students that I'm working with. No, I don't talk about mitochondria and this and that. It's like, right, why am I doing this? Why? Because this is what you want to do in the long run. Yeah, trust me. So kind of going through the basics again, mm-hmm. you know, putting on that white belt again, going through the basics has just been really cool. And whenever I actually can take the test, I'll, uh, I'll sit and take it. That's awesome. I'll pick your brain about that. I'd be very curious. Oh, oh well, speaking Other of courses. That, I, don't know. I mean, they're behind me right now, like I'm doing a bunch of stuff with uh, Heroic Sport and their, uh, their Indian club course. Um, so I've got I'm not my, aware of that uh, yet. I will look at clubs uh, behind me. I got introduced with them um, via one of their handles. So they have what they call the Palavandal, which is basically a handle for an Indian club that attaches to any standard water bottle. What? Okay. I just pulled it up. Up to, yeah. So the, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I'm watching your reaction on the, uh, on the screen. Um, yeah. That's so the, genius. the handle is attached to a water bottle up to um, three kilos, up to about six pounds. So wow. I got, I got in contact with them. I became one of their ambassadors and uh, I was decided, I was like, well, you know what? Let's kind of see how you're teaching them too. You know, because I do the Indian Club stuff with uh, with James Needlinger and the uh, uh, Flexible Steel Indian Clubs course, but it's like, hey, you know, let's kind of see what else is is out there. 
Um, so the cool thing with this is it got me doing a lot of the things with two hands, one club, heavier clubs. So that was, that was really interesting, uh, interesting as well. So just kind of diving into that, going through some of their stuff, um, uh, getting in touch with uh, Philippe Thiel and going through some of the stuff with, uh, with the, uh, the, the pro bar. So, yeah, so, you know, look, I've got, I've got hundreds of things that I want to go through. It's like, all right, if this quarantine goes on for as long as possible, I can do everything I want. But if it ends tomorrow, I'm happy, but kind of screwed because I just kind of signed up for a lot of stuff. And, yeah. But you have enough more stuff than I have. I am really impressed, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know uh, Flexible still had Indian clubs. Uh, I'm learning a lot. This is great. Well, Flexible yeah, so, still. So, all right, Flexible. Flexible steel. So again, uh, uh, John Ingham's uh, baby um, met him doing a one day kettlebell workshop, basically just showed up and was like, all right, I'm assisting you. And he was like, all right, cool. I need an assistant. That was probably 11 years ago. And um, again, another cool guy that's kind of in my phone that, you know, was lucky to kind of look up to at the time, be like, all right, who's, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm going to, help them teach some kettlebell stuff. And it's like, Oh, this is who I'm helping. Sweet. Uh, yeah. We've got the Taekwondo background, uh, like myself as well. So it's like, we really hit it off. Um, been to Korea a bunch of times with, uh, with him to teach some, uh, strong first courses. That's incredible. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, started doing his flexible steel stuff, went through it actually a couple of times. Um, he called me into New York, uh, one time to assist and kind of surprised me and the whole class with, he's like, Hey, I was going to announce this tomorrow, but may as well just announce it today. Um, Matt Flaherty is one of our newest, uh, master instructors. And I was like, did you want to talk to me about this first? <laughs> I mean, I'm cool with it, but yeah, yeah. sweet. So yeah, so I've been teaching the courses, um, within the flexible steel community organization we have three courses so we have our our flexible steel our level one and our level two and then we also have our indian clubs which is really spearheaded right now by uh james needlinger who is i'm probably butchering his last name sorry james um he's actually right now he's actually in uh, in hong kong he's living there for a while um but he teaches he teaches the indian clubs course uh so the level one workshop is all about being being flexible so a lot of people find i want to be strong and i want to be flexible but they haven't figured out how to mesh the two together so it turns into this awesome i'm super strong but i'm extremely tight so mm -hmm. then we work on great i've built all my flexibility but crap i've lost all my strength well Flexible steel is about, no, 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 How do we get both? How do we get strong and flexible at the same time? And then how do we get strong in those end ranges of motion, in those odd positions? It's like, yeah, great. I am super strong just doing a shoulder press, standing up, driving through the floor, quads tight, ass tight, abs tight, ooh, pushing a bar overhead. Great. How can I maintain that same strength overhead sitting in a split in the bottom of my squat position, doing a side lunge or a Cossack squat and then pressing from there, which, wow. which guess what makes my standing, driving my feet through the ground, squeeze my quads, squeeze my ass, brace my abs, making that standing military press that much better. I'm so excited. I am so excited about this. So that's what the level one and the level two is all about. So the level one is going through those, that flexibility uh, and mobility protocol. And then the level two is the kind of the strength component. How do I increase on that, but then get strong in those, in those end ranges of motion? Oh, I am so excited to take this September 20th in Denver. September 20th. In Denver, uh, yeah, man, I'm 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 super excited about that as well. And you're, you're gonna be there, right? 
I mean, as long as I can still be there, yeah. I, 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 I dude, flights and everything. Well, flights are booked. The hotel's not booked yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, bike tours. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing that weekend. But yeah, no, I will. Uh, I will be there. Awesome. You're gonna love the place too. Uh, Ryan and uh, Dan are great, great people. Their gym is fantastic. Is that where we met? Where you met the pups? No, actually, they own that gym now too. But that's yeah, small world, oh, look right? Look at them, big wigs, oh, yeah. only a couple of facilities. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> actually, uh, that gym was being run by our friend um, uh, Justin Rewa, who is a strong first man as well, and uh, he's getting into backcountry snowboarding this last two years. And that was he was managing that gym at the time, which is why the strong first um, SFG was being held there with Fabio and um, and Doc Cardle. And you came by, which was very nice. We brought the dogs, and that was a good time. Yeah, that was on my uh, drive back to New York. Yeah, gosh. Was that from the trip down to Steamboat? And did we have dinner over there? There was multiple, yeah, there was multiple stops there. But yes, that was the trip that we, we met a couple of, or met up a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of days prior. That's uh, right. In Steamboat. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, it was. At the Cook Your Own Steakhouse. I've been telling everybody about that. They're like, how do you, what is that? It's like a Street Steakhouse. If you guys go, if you go to 8th Street Steakhouse, or if you're in Steamboat, 8th Street Steakhouse, order the baked potato for dessert. That blew my mind. You're welcome. <laughs> Matthew's <laughs> right. We're, we're having a beer, right? My wife's there and his wife is there and the two kids are there. And uh, they're like, we're getting the baked potato. I'm like, a potato for dessert? And um, yeah, get the baked potato. Yep. Good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, Whenever I go there, my cousins know it's like I, you know, we do dinner with them a lot, but then we hit Eighth Street Steakhouse because I know I got to cook my own steak, but it's 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 a fun place. It's, it's cool. Place. That's very cool. Which so, kid was uh, it to try to stab us with the antlers? Um, uh, no, my kids. It was probably the younger one. This yeah, the, my yeah. Kids uh, it was cute. We were on guard. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. drinking our beer like this because we know a knife is coming at us at any time from a yeah. Oh, they're, they're cute kids. And correct me, uh, is it Mandarin or Cantonese that they speak? My older one right now speaks. Uh, it's Mandarin. 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 Okay. Um, which my younger one, when he starts that school in September, he'll uh, he'll start speaking as well. That's incredible. So yeah, in a year from now, they'll be talking behind my my five year old and my three year old will be talking behind mine and my wife's back in Mandarin. You know what? I, that's that's impressive. Is what they yeah. good for them. It's it's actually been created. The school that he goes to is is uh, it's a full immersion school. So literally every other day, he's four and a half right now. He's going to be five in April. April. He'll be five in April. Yeah, I know because they're eight in April. A's, Mason, May, M's. Yeah, hey, that's smart. That's father of the year right here. <laughs> um, he will be five in April and he's speaking Mandarin. That's incredible. Yeah. We're ah. going for uh, last year when he was four, you know, we do, they do the school does a whole birthday thing and uh, we go in there and, you know, they're talking back and forth. It's in the Mandarin room. They're talking back and forth in Mandarin. Room. Me and my wife are looking at each other and looking at the teacher. And it's like, what did you say? And they're going back and forth and they're having like this whole conversation. I'm like, yeah, no, they're messing with us. They're totally screwing with us. Yeah. And the teacher's like, well, no, we asked him if you have any pets at home. And he said, yes, you have two dogs. You have Wednesday, who is all black. She is older. And Pugsley, who is younger, and he's a boy and he's crazy. And I look at my wife and I look at the teacher. I was like, wait, he just said all of that in Mandarin. Right. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that, that's what he just told us. I was oh. like, holy crap. My kid really will be talking behind my back in Mandarin. That's amazing. Is Chien money in Mandarin or is that just Cantonese? I think. I don't know. Let me go ask my son. There you go. Please do. <laughs> I used to work in trans restaurants and uh, I, the most common word was Chien, which is money, but I don't know which version of Chinese. Um, Oh and, uh, that was uh yeah so to backtrack a little bit so that that trip that we went out for um i had uh i've been trying to plan i did the that was uh was that the tour to steamboat no 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 no, no never mind that was i've been trying to do a bike ride i've been no bleh 
I don't want a whiskey. <laughs> I have been trying to drive out to Colorado for four or five years now. Mm -hmm. And when I initially planned that trip, um, three weeks before I was supposed to leave, I was going to drive out to Steamboat, do the tour to Steamboat, hang out for a little bit, and then drive back. But right before I left, found out that my grandmother was sick. And mm -hmm. that basically, she didn't have that much longer to, uh, you know, to, to, to be around. Mm -hmm. So canceled that trip, got to see her, you know, a ton, got to, you know, got to hang out with her before she, before she wound up passing away. And that was, oh God, that's now, that was right before Aiden was born. So it'll be five. So that was almost five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. So then it was like, I just trying to find the needed the stars and everything to align to make that trip happen. And literally it just never did. And finally this year it all did. So I drove out, I had done the, the, uh, the tour to steamboat, um, a year later, but I flew out and I guess we'll get to that because that's what, that was the ride that was, uh, in simple and sinister. Mm -hmm. So for this tour, I drove out, drove out from New York, drove to Copper Mountain, did the Copper Triangle, which is a hundred and I mean, maybe just over a hundred miles. I, yeah, I can't keep track of the hundred plus mile tours that I do because I literally train in New York with no altitude and no climbing for about 25 miles. Right. And then well, I'm going to go out to Colorado and do these big ass bike tours that I probably have no business doing um, and just do them. Yeah. So did the Copper Triangle, um, stayed in Copper, drove to Copper, drove from Copper to Steamboat, stayed there for a week. My wife, she is a saint, uh, flew out solo with, uh, with my two boys. Mm -hmm. um, we stayed in Steamboat for a week. Uh, I drew, when I drove, I took both, uh, both of my dogs, so I drove out with the dogs. We then, we stayed in Steamboat for a week. That's when we met up with, uh, with you guys at 8th Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from Steamboat, drove to Aspen, hung so out there for a week with my, uh, you know, my in-laws. I think there were just over uh, with my new nephew. I want to say that was 22 of us that were, uh, that were there. Yeah, there were a lot of us, 22 yeah. of us that were there. And then drove back from Aspen with Aiden, with my older boy, the two dogs, and, uh, you know, drove back to New York. So that was a nice, uh, basically able to say, I'm taking a month off, taking August off. I'll see you guys in September. And you pulled it off. That's so off. cool. Left, uh, left New York on uh, whatever the date was, left New York at like 3 a.m., hit St. Louis uh, that night. Stayed with a buddy of mine, good, you know, another SF, uh, another SFG, Mike Lindner. Uh, stayed with him in St. Louis, and then from St. Louis drove to uh, drove to Copper. Copper was basically like, uh, "Hey, I'm here a day earlier because I thought it was going to take me three days to drive, not two days to drive." Mm -hmm. uh, they were like, "Yeah, we can we can extend your room. That's cool." Uh, so again, stayed there. And then on the way home, I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to go a different route. So I actually drove from Aspen up to Omaha. I'm from Omaha. I love Omaha. Yeah, I, yeah we, we spoke about that. I actually stayed with um, – uh, or not, not stayed with, but met up with uh, John what? Patrick Scott Stevens. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Turned out, full circle times three, John Ingham was there because he was dropping off his son – at college so Which, up at uh Creighton or uh yes Creighton's good school yeah, Creighton. nice um so we had breakfast with them um and then drove from Omaha hit some town in Ohio um because it literally started oh well, Paradise Ohio <laughs> oh, and then Paradise Ohio back to New York so coming home with my son it took me three days um huh. Bet he loved the road trip, though. Partially because I wasn't waking up at 3 a.m. and just hitting the road for 15, 16 hours. Yeah, which is probably right. smart. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna sleep until nine, have breakfast till ten. We'll be on the road at noon and and go from there. What an adventure, man! That's so cool. 
It was. It was. Uh, it was really fun. Kansas is long and boring. Oh, I agree. I grew up in Omaha, and you know, we would drive through Kansas, through Oklahoma, down to Texas to visit our relatives, and uh, not much to say about Kansas. You know. Yeah. No. <laughs> I remember there was one point in Kansas where I was like, "All right, great. I see some. Uh, <clears throat> I see some wind turbines in the distance. I'm just curious." From here until I actually am next to the first turbine, how far is it? Something like 63 miles. And it's like, great, I can see straight for 63 miles because this is just straight flat. It is. It's crazy. You know, um, I've had some another person from Omaha here, and you probably know him, um, Alex. Um, yeah, the Hebrew yep. hammer. Yeah, great guy. Yep. Uh, we were joking about there's not a whole lot to Omaha besides good people and the zoo. The zoo is amazing. We didn't see the zoo, but yes, I, I've got to agree from the, you know, two people that I know from Omaha. Uh, yes, there are good people. <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Three people. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you sorry. just said you're from Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, uh, our, our mutual friend, Eric Frohart, he's from Iowa. So uh, it's fun because his wife is Nebraskan. He's from Iowa. And, uh, in that same book, The Quick and the Dead, in that same page, you're referenced at the very top. Mm -hmm. And then the article I wrote with Eric and Pavel is, you know, it's cool having Pavel say your name, Eric's name, my name, tying it all together. Well, and dude, it, it's, it's your page. Honestly, take credit for it. Like, I've got three lines. You have the rest of the page. You, you are more impressive, though. The 100-mile bike ride, that's impressive. I that's have three lines. You have the rest of the page. <laughs> I, I'm very proud of it, and I'm very happy with it. In fact, I did record it. Sean Silwell, a Colorado mountain man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does he say my name? Because I haven't heard the audio book. Oh. Like, how does oh, you he ever heard the audio book? Yeah, I have it recorded oh. somewhere. No, nope, wrong button. <laughs> nope, wrong button. <laughs> wrong button. I will send you the link. Oh, yeah, that's he awesome. Says your name. He says it correctly, too. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, a, it was actually fun. I like. I had no idea because right before that was actually that's the year that I did the tour to Steamboat. Mm -hmm. Because I flew out to Colorado, I flew out to Steamboat, did the ride, and then my cousins drove me to Denver, where I did um, Strong Endurance. Yes. And then shocker, the third person that I know from Omaha, John Patrick Scott Stevens, drove me to the airport. So I reached out to Craig, Craig Marker at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even remember how it all came about, uh, but I reached out to him or I got connected with him somehow. I was like, Hey, I'd love to see one of these, uh, one of the protocol. I'm doing a bike tour in Colorado the weekend before strong endurance. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be a Guinea pig. Yeah. And he sent me a six week program. So in my mind, I was like, perfect. I can do it twice because I think I was exactly 12 weeks from the tour. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And, you know, the, 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 the results were, it was unbelievable. I know. And I, at the end of the workshop, I, uh, you know, I said to Pavel, you know, when everyone's doing, you know, the whole paparazzi thing, you know, taking the selfies with Pavel, mm -hmm. I'd gone up to him and I was, you know, I told him what, you know, what, uh, you know, what my experience was with it and how I did during the bike tour literally the weekend before. And he was like, that is unbelievable. Please send those results to Craig. And I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And like, that was the last we spoke about it. That was the last of anything about it. And then you show up to eighth street steakhouse with this book and it's like, dude, you're in it. And I'm like, what the hell do you mean? I'm in it. And Sure enough, there I am in my three lines, and then you have the rest of the page. Well, that's true. Well, thank you uh, for your <laughs> kindness. But it's, you start the whole thing off. He's like, and then the what the hell effects. Matthew Flaherty, SFB, SFG, SFL. And, you know, and then he tells the results. And it's so cool. And you're right. Like, uh, as a person who goes through a strong first uh, certification, uh, they do offer that to people. You know, here's some protocols, you know, do them and report back. And Craig Marker, Dr. Craig Marker, um, is usually in charge of that. And uh, it's just so cool what they, what they create, how they research stuff, and then let people like you and me and, and Eric and other people test them in the real world 
for real world results, not just like in the gym results. And it really works. Yeah. And, and it was, it was mind blowing because the two exercises that I did were upper body. How the hell does upper body translate to hours off a century in Colorado? That, I have no idea. Like I did banded pushups and snatches. Mm -hmm. How the hell does that like train my legs to be able to climb these hills, to climb rabbit ears pass, you yeah. know, to, to, to climb gore pass, to, you know, to, to get on these climbs on a bike. From and it's like, right, you know, you see these people that post about the, what the hell effect, you know, when it comes to, um, Oh, you know, all I've been doing are swings and my deadlift went up. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of a correlation there. You know, it's kind of the same joint actions, yeah. the same movement. I did push ups and snatches and it made my bike ride better. Right. I, it's so crazy, which is, which is why I'm so much a big advocate for it. And, um, yeah. I like to share with everybody. I, I train and, um, yeah. In fact, my, my person today, I was training my last person right before this, this, uh, podcast, um, has what the hell effects too. It's just great to see. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's again, you know, there's that dead horse. Let's just beat it. I mean, it, it's <laughs> making the better version of you. What is going, what are you going to do? What can I have you do? That's mm -hmm. going to make you be the best version of whatever you're doing. And mm -hmm. in my case, that protocol pushups and snatches made me the best version of me that day on a hundred and tour to steamboat. It was a 116 mile bike tour at elevation at elevation. When you come from New York city, when I train at sea level yeah, for 25 miles. Yeah. And then do 116. <laughs> right. What the hell? <laughs> exactly. Literally. <laughs> I love it. And this is why I think these kind of discussions need to be shared more because in the fitness industry, what I'm seeing is, a lot of flash, a lot of entertainment, people having variety and excessive amounts of entertainment for entertainment's sake. You know, what's cool on Instagram, what's cool on Facebook and good on them. If that gets their people inspired, good. And I'm going on a tangent here. I'm sorry. It wasn't planned. All but good. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got until <it> August. <laughs> I got the vodka. But, uh, <laughs> um it's just, you know, it's cool to talk to a real fitness professional who's seasoned, who's been in it for a long time, over a decade. Um, what works and why you do it, right? And who you do it for, as opposed to a person who, oh God, I don't want to say anything bad. Uh, doing it for the Instagram, right? Doing it for the, the, the flash and this and that. And um, not really knowing why they're doing it or what the movement patterns are or how to coach it correctly or for the right population. Um, that part frustrates me a bit. I talked to Pat Flynn about that and other fitness professionals and it's interesting, you know, because right now Instagram can be great. Seeing pictures of dogs, mountains. I'm, I'm on Instagram, you know, hopefully you know, split boarding and dogs and I have a drone now and I, I don't know, I'm just trying to get people excited about the outdoors and life, but uh, tangent over, it's nice to talk to a real fitness professional doing real stuff. To help people. I, I try to be a real fitness professional. You know, like I said, it's, you are. I'm in this because I saw what fitness did for me at the time. Why did I get into it? Like my father-in-law said, I was living in a gym anyway. Mm -hmm. I was training and competing and fighting Taekwondo. What did, what did I need to do? I needed to potentially be bigger, stronger, faster. I needed what I got from the gym to translate to that because at the time, that's what I was. And that's what I needed to be the best me in. Mm -hmm. So now it's just, you know, I, I don't think I train that many fighters at all. Um, yeah. You know, some of the students that, you know, at my Taekwondo school, but it, it's what can I do to make you the best, the best version of you, no matter what it is. Yes. And taking things like that, you know, the, you know, the simple and sinister, the plan strong protocols that, you know, what I've learned from strong first, what I've learned through other organizations that I've gone through their, their programming modules. Let me take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this and, and help you become you, you know, the, the best you that you want to be and, and help you get to those goals and 
hey, we get to those goals, great. Now let's set new goals. Mm -hmm. Now let's kind of push yourself and challenge yourself and find what the next level is. Absolutely. And go uh, from there. No, I love that, Matthew. It is right. There's great tools out there, you know, and you are you have a, a very big toolkit, <laughs> which is great because you can help a lot of people, you know. And I'm looking forward to learning from you uh, at the Flexible Steel here uh, in September. Again, and my friend uh, Ryan, who's on my podcast earlier, he's a great guy. I was chatting with him earlier. Um, he's a vet, so is his business partner, and their gym's awesome. You're going to love it. They're all about everything we just talked about and move nat and just beer nice. and red meat and they're good people. <laughs> they're our kind of people. <laughs> yeah. So kind of along the terms of move nat. So one of the other, you know, things that I've, that I, that I've gone through again, you know, I, I used to joke and then or people used to joke about me about it. And then I kind of looked at, it, I was like, yeah, you know, you, you've gone through like every course, like you have every letter after your name. And it was like, I look at it and I was like, uh, actually, Q and Z are the only two letters I don't have after my name. <laughs> yeah. And then I got my master's and it's like the only thing that I put after my name is now my MS. Um, but yeah, you know, there, there's so many things out there and you, you've got to find what you can use to help your clients, your athletes, your students get to where they want to be. Yes. You can kind of get lost in all of these courses out there and go through everything. But if you can't apply it to what and who you're working with, then it's just letters after your name. Right. And then, it, then and it's nothing. Yeah. So all the organizations that I've affiliated myself with, that I've gone through their courses, that I, I, I teach for, are organizations that A, I believe in, mm -hmm. and B, organizations that what they're putting out I can use and apply to everybody that I work with. Yes. Not just, oh, well, I'm taking this course for you and this course for you. No, I'm taking this course for all of you. I'm taking this course for all of you. And, you know, Flexible Steel, Ground Force Method, the Strong Force Protocols, those are the courses that I can apply to anybody and everybody that I'm working with. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think in summary of that too, at the strong endurance, you know, you saw who I think, and I think you probably think this as well, were the leaders in the fitness industry there. There was Greg Cook, said hello to him, talked to him. Um, from TRX, uh, you have Dr. Chris Sprinkle, right? You have, um, you have Brett Jones, you got Fabio there, you got Eric Frohart, you have Pavel doing the talking, you know, you were there. Um, these are the people making the change leading the change in the fitness industry and they're speaking a common language like you just did and yeah. hopefully making better, stronger, more resilient, happy people out there. That's, that's what it comes down to. That's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, with that note, um, my beverage is gone as a big beverage. <laughs> so I just refilled. So I've got another half of beverage. <laughs> awesome. Mm. But, uh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm excited to come out. So that, that, that weekend, uh, for the flexible steel in Denver, um, again, the stars all lined up. So I think that Saturday, the day, the day before the workshop, I'm going to mm -hmm. be in grand junction doing a bike tour. Oh, good for you. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the tour of the vineyards. Oh, good. They do make wine out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that you had me sold bikes, wine, Colorado. I was like, no, <laughs> no, you can't make me go. Don't do it. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, that's so again, if, if I'll be out there, if the stars align, my wife will come out there as well. Uh, so we'll do the ride. We will fly out Thursday, acclimate Friday, do the ride Saturday, rent a car, drive from Grand Junction to Denver Saturday night, teach Sunday, fly home Monday. Pretty jam-packed. I dig it. Whew, what the Ooh. hell? <laughs> well, hey, I'll take you to lunch during the course, man. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm game for that. Yeah, I know some places. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I, re I really like teaching that course because there are a lot of things in that course that just kind of, it, it, it blows people's mind basically. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, uh, yeah, spoiler alert. The first thing we do in shoulder mobility is work on your ankle. What? I'm excited. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> People look at me like I've got six heads. It's like, all right, wait, 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 Matt, you said you're working on shoulder mobility. Yeah, no, no, no I know. So here's what I want you to do with your ankle. Wait, dude, dude, you said you're working shoulder mobility. Yeah. I know. Here's what I want you to do with your ankle. Yeah. And it's like we do that first drill and all of a sudden it's like shoulder mobility improved. It's like, okay, now I'm listening. Cool. Wow. Now we'll start going up. Now we're going to hit the hip, then the T-spine, then we're going to hit the shoulder. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I stopped the range of motion because I got scared because I was going way further than I thought. Wow. I am extremely intrigued. <laughs> I'm extremely, extremely intrigued. This is awesome. Uh, we uh, taught the course out in California. Um, had some people do their first working on flexibility, not even working on strength, working on flexibility and mobility, hit their first um, hanging leg raise. Had some people that actually pressed a heavier bell than they were used than they had been before. So basically, set a PR wow. in their uh, uh, one person in the in a double bell press, one person in a single a single arm press. Um, again, just working some of the shoulder mobility. Uh, that's incredible. I'm very intrigued. Very yeah, excited. It's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a fun course. Like I said, it's probably one of the one of the one of my favorite courses to teach. Well, I'm looking forward to learning from you. This is gonna be great. Um, we're going to spread the word. You have some fun students. And we're gonna yeah, awesome. You. Good, man. The more, the merrier. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Matthew, before we, we uh, end the podcast, again, um, so you're teaching this Flexible Steel course uh, here in Denver, which I'm going to September 20th at my friend Ryan and Dan's gym, Existence Athletics, great awesome. facility. Um, where can people find you on the interwebs? Uh, they can go to my website, staffordstrength.com. It's a good looking uh, site. They can find me on Facebook. Uh, again, the business page is Stafford Strength. They can find my personal page under my name, Matthew Flaherty. Same thing on Instagram. Uh, if you want to see pictures of my kids and my dogs, follow <laughs> Matthew Flaherty. If you want to see pictures and things having to do with training, the workshops, things like that, follow Stafford Strength. Um, I think I'm on Twitter at Stafford strength as well. I have it linked so that I post on Instagram and it goes everywhere. I know that. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about it. Well, great. I'll, I'll put that all in the show notes too. So people can find all that I, and your website's good looking and there's a picture of you training and, so. and you have your Instagram feed going to it too, which is very smart. Yeah. Yeah. That's on the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. you can email me Matthew at Stafford strength.com. There it is. Yes, oh, I named my business after my dogs. <laughs> They're Stafford Terriers. They are. They are they Stafford Terrible Terriers. And I'm sorry if that's what you guys hear in the background because they are snoring up a storm over there. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> At that SSG we stopped by with both of them, um, was it Wednesday who sprawled out? Well, and they both did. But, yeah, Wednesday, my, my female Wednesday, she's uh, – uh, she just turned eight and then my male, uh, Pugsley is, uh, he just turns three in November. They're great dogs. So yes, if you do the math, I got a dog while my wife was seven months pregnant. <laughs> I like your style. Yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, Matthew, um, uh, <laughs> Thank you for your time, man. Much love to yeah, you. Yeah, man. Family. Oh, absolutely, man. Love, uh, love chatting with you. Hope, uh, hope the listeners got got something out of this. And oh, they uh, did. yeah, man. Hope to see. Hope to see every one of you in Denver. That's right. I'll put the word out. Well, and I'll put on to boat Eighth Street Steakhouse. It's good. Cook your own food. <laughs> Cook your own steak. Get the baked potato. <laughs> exactly. Get the baked potato. Well, awesome, Matthew. Thank you so much for everything, man. Much love to you and your family. And. Um, We'll do Stay this again very soon. Awesome. Back at you.